listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Let's talk about ownership and Amira. Well, hey there. Welcome back. I hope you had a great week. I know some of you wonder where the framework for the podcast come from. The answer is, for the most part, they come from thoughtful consideration. <laughs> Look, I say that because there are too many things out there, too many blogs, too many too many things out there where people just run into things as part of their everyday life and they're like, oh, that would make a good blog entry. And, you know, for the most part, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, we know other humans, so we hear about their days, and you have your own day. So you don't really need me to say, hey, I ran into a person today, and they did a thing, and let's talk about that, you know? So that's typically what I don't do, except for today. It was a very quick interaction with someone that made me think about the concept of ownership. And let me expand on that. It's more of a philosophical ownership. As you can imagine, um, I talk about my books once in a while when I'm out, and I was um, at an establishment wearing my cool swag cap, and I have a cap that I love wearing, and it literally has a sword and a sunflower embroidered on it, and I think it's the coolest thing ever. Look, okay, I'll put a link in the description or somewhere so that you can, if you really want to pick one up. But I think it's really cool because it doesn't have any words or anything on it. And basically people say, oh, what is that? And I say, what do you see? And they say, I see a sword and a sunflower. And I say, thank you. So it's pretty cool. So it started a conversation with someone on the other side of the counter. And she asked what the two books were. And I told her. And then I told her the name of the sequel. And when I told her the name of the sequel, she reacted very negatively. She said, oh, we don't, we, we don't, we don't like that. And I went, what? And so you have to understand that the, you know, the Sword and Sunflower sequel is Amira. And that, in my understanding at the time, was a made up word. And if you, you have to read the book to understand what Amira is. I mean, I could just tell you what it is, but it's not a person. I found out later that it is actually a person's name in certain circles. So in this case, she said, yeah, that's my ex's name. That's her name. And I said, oh, and she said, yeah, we don't like that. We don't like that word at all. Now, I like my books. They mean a lot to me. They mean a lot to me because of the feedback that they produce. They mean a lot to me because of what I put into them. And they, they, there's a special place in my heart for the fiction that I write because I put so much effort into it. And it, and, and it is meaningful. And, and it does seem to touch people. People do seem to enjoy it and like it. And you know, as much as I, I want to live in denial, they do seem to actually like it. So it would be fairly easy for me to become offended at that, to say, well, you know, you just heard the name of my book and then you're just going to rip on it. Well, she wasn't doing that. She wasn't doing that because she had given ownership of that name to someone else. Not just ownership for people, but ownership for that entire word. So let's let's think about this, because my name, my exciting name is Mark, M-I-R-K, but you can call me Mark, and my friends call me Mark, also you can call me Mark. There's not a lot going on there, right? It's, it's, it's a simple four-letter letter word, but it's also a verb and a noun. Um, it's not just a dude's name, it's, you know, it's a lot of things. So it's not a word that you could typically take ownership of in the same way that this is not a person's name in the story, and it's a very meaningful icon for what is a very special end to a very special story. And to her, it's a name of an ex that the things obviously didn't go well. Most people have exes, right? I, I, I never use that term, but like most people have ex boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, right? We also have ex friends, we have ex this, we have ex that, and sometimes we even have ex family, you know? Um, voluntarily or not. So we have X interactions with people. Sometimes we break ties. Sometimes we, we don't. Sometimes we still know these people, but they, you know, they, they make us feel very sour, you know, whether it's a job and a boss, an ex boss, an environment, what have you. Right. So 
what I'm about to tell you is a way to not program your brain. It's a way to spend less energy and get more. And I just love doing that. Don't you? I mean, doesn't the lazy part of you go, wait, can you give me some tips on how to how to how to spend less energy, but then get something like really positive to happen? Oh, OK, because, you know, it's pretty easy to tell someone to spend more energy to get something out of life. Right. But to spend less energy, it shouldn't work that way. But it does, because we find that we're putting all this energy into something and we're getting a negative result. In this case, she was putting energy into getting a negative result. Well, wait, she didn't put any energy. She just said, we don't like that person. Well, she was because I presented her as a as a completely separate personal person outside of any circle that she moves within and said, hey, I'm going to spring this word on you. And she immediately went, oh, my ex owns that word. You see what she did there? She's she's like, my ex owns that word. My ex owns the essence of those letters put together. So no matter how, what you do with that, whether it's an acronym for something, whether it's a name of a person, place, uh, action, she owns all of that. And her ex doesn't own all of that because she's out on a mountaintop holding a staff and the, and the wind is blowing a hair and her cape around. And she's, and she's like constantly casting this ever on spell. The person I talked to was putting the effort into making her ex own that because she was owning it in her mind. She didn't own it in my mind. I doubt if she owned it in most of the people's minds in the particular establishment I was in. Maybe somebody's close to her and, you know, if they would hear that name too, they'd be like, oh yeah, really, right? But she was still putting effort into it. So my point from this is people don't take ownership of things, especially people you no longer associate with. If you're involved in a hobby or a thing, and it's something someone you used to know did, it's not a reason to stop doing it. My rule is, you know, a, a friendship or romantic connection is a great reason to start a hobby, but it's a horrible reason to stop one. So if you get into a hobby because your your ex whatever was into it and you actually liked it personally and individually and independently, if you guys part ways, there's really no reason why you should stop doing that. In fact, there's every reason you should continue doing it because that way you get ownership back of that. And the same thing is for names. Now, I'm sure more than one person listening to this has an ex or something painful in their life with a word on it. And they say, I don't ever want to run into another Ronald again. <laughs> Whatever, you know, right? Insert your own name here. Insert a name here. Because, my God, you know, Ronald was the worst person in the entire world. Eh. So, personally, I, I've had a couple people like that enter and exit my life. But the next person who enters my life with that particular name is not going to represent them and they're not going to be owned by that person. They breathe life into that particular name. I don't care. I honestly don't care. When I think back intellectually and emotionally to when I parted ways with, with someone, let's say, um, I still don't ever remember thinking, God, I hope I don't meet another person with that name. It just, yeah, because that person's going to be a different person. So the same thing happens for the name of my book and this person's ex-girlfriend. She doesn't own the name of my book. You know, just like I don't own the name of anyone else or anything. I breathe life into the words and the and I, I'm Mark. Hi, how you doing? Um, you may know a Mark that's more or less of a jerk than I am. <laughs> um, but they're their own people. I'm my own person. So my takeaway to you, the less ownership you allow someone in your past, present, or future to have, the less power they will have over your emotions and your brain. And when things go south, then the, the word or concept doesn't go south with them. And I've also found that if you truly assigned a lot of really great positive emotions to a person, which is why you got together with them to begin with, 
and you part ways in a very sour and unfulfilling way, those very positive emotions is really what you should take with you for that word or name. And then you keep all the power. Take care. And um, maybe pick up a copy of Amira. <laughs> thanks. Hey there, thanks for listening. I always appreciate your feedback. I really, really do. Wanted to let you know that the Sword in the Sunflower audiobook won as Best New Author for 2020. My podcast is available wherever you consume podcasts, and my books are available on Amazon. Take care.